gentlemen, welcome to KFAI and our web show Bangla for Bangla Music. And we are here to listen to some really fun things tonight. We have two different segments of this program. First segment we'll be covering Paul Basha Siddiq's music producer or music composer's uh, interview. And the second segment would be some Bengali musics with Miss Dolly. So let's listen to um, the section where Gary Simon, who is a Hollywood star right now, and our very own KFAI friend, Paul Basha Siddiq's music producer, which became world famous through YouTube, Matt, Matt Harding's um, YouTube video. Let's listen to the interview with Gary Simon. Thank you. Gary Simon was the background person or music director behind the scene who has made this prime video possible uh, side by side with our KFI friend from California, Matt Harden, whose video in YouTube is so famous. I have Gary. Welcome, Gary. Nice to be here. Thank you, Carl. Okay. Sure. Um, Gary, can you share something about you, yourself, and yeah. anything you'd like to talk to the KFI folks regarding your experience with Matt? And please chime in. Sure. Uh, well, I, I guess for for those who've never heard of me, uh, I am a composer. I've been writing music um, mostly for films, television shows, and the last four or five years I've been scoring a lot of video games, including uh, uh, Bioshock, which was quite a, a successful game and was very successful with the score. Um, I won a few awards for that. Um, I met Matt. Matt, by the way, lives in, in Seattle or in the uh, the Seattle area, um, and I met Sorry. Matt. Uh, it's okay. I met Matt uh, through video games, uh, ironically enough, or perhaps uh, perfectly enough. Um, he, I Matt, before his new incarnation as an international dancer, uh, bad dancer as he likes to say, <laughs> um, uh, making these videos that are so famous now. It's just really stunningly and uh, funny too. <laughs> And they're, they're just really, they're, they're really move people or people just enjoy them immensely. It's mm -hmm. really quite a phenomena. Mm -hmm. But I met Matt, oh, maybe three and a half, four years ago at a convention at, uh, for video games in Los Angeles. Uh, it was called E3. I don't think there is an E3 now. Maybe they're reviving it. <clears throat> but um, I had worked on a game uh, that Matt had also worked on for a company called Pandemic Studios, and he he was actually living in Australia at the time, uh, working on this game called uh, it, it's a humor humorous uh, alien game called Destroy All Humans, and uh, wow. uh, <laughs> Matt came up with the idea for that, which is a little <laughs> ironic considering the message perhaps of his videos, but <laughs> nonetheless, Matt had, does have a good sense of humor. And mm -hmm. um, so he happened to be in the booth, so I think it was at the pandemic, and uh, he, he, the game had come out. He really liked the score, and we got introduced, and he just really uh, uh, said some nice things about uh, the music, and uh, and we exchanged uh, email, you know. Um, and some months later, he contacted me. He says, I've, I've got this project that I'm doing, and uh, he says, maybe you've seen my original video. Because he, before all of the craziness for Matt, start, uh, the thing that really started the ball rolling, if any, if no one knows the history of Matt, is that he had gone, he had quit his job uh, without any expectation of a new job and spent all of his money growing around the world. And in doing so, he made a video of himself dancing in all these, you know, all these places all over the world. It's really beautiful places. But he did this really kind of a crazy, nutty dance that he does. And then he put it on his website. This is pre-YouTube days. He put it on his website, and millions of people virally found it. And this led to him being contacted by a, uh, um, a marketing company, which uh, had a client, Stride Gum, that was interested in sponsoring him on going around the world again. So at that point, um, he had just put, he had just thrown some music onto that, uh, the original one. But at this point, he needed some music. He needed some original music, or some music that you know was speci specifically tailored to this project. So he he called me. He said later I was the only uh, composer he knew, so that was why he called me. <laughs> so uh, I, I was lucky, I guess. Um, I, I almost said no. Uh, I was in the middle of a project, and it seemed like a really crazy thing, and it, I didn't see. 
I didn't understand it really, to be honest. It, it was like just kind of this nutty dance that he did all over the world, and which I thought was cool. But I just like, and plus, I'm not really a songwriter per se. I'm really sort of a orchestral composer. So I thought, well, I'm probably inappropriate for this, but um, but in any event, I said yes. My wife actually convinced me to say to do it, and uh, there was there was a nice little there was a decent budget for it. It wasn't like you know something you're just doing for for nothing. There's a there's a little budget, so which most of which went into the production, and that was the first one we did together, and that was very well received. Um, mm-hmm. We did a second video together, which was basically he didn't go around the world again, but he he created like some humorous outtakes from his original his his first uh, stride journey. And stride paid for the second one, and so I did another song for that. Um, and then, of course, the most famous one is the one that Paul Bosch sings on, uh, mm-hmm. which is uh, what well, I guess why we're talking today. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was top ten on, on Amazon.com download list, right? It was for for many weeks. For many weeks, yep. it was. <laughs> it was uh, I have sold a lot of MP3s. On yep, yep. So, uh, for our audience who does not know that much about this music video, which kind of uh, creates the essence of human unity and universalism. So, I don't know if any of you recently watched John Stewart show. John Stewart, after Obama has won, with the whole world dancing behind Obama actually used this video. Have you uh, have you seen that? I did. It was this video that Matt has, has done. It is him going around the world and dancing with... Uh, the original one, he went around the world and just danced in different places. And a couple of times, people joined him. Joined mm-hmm. him. But this, the, the one that's become so successful and so uh, famous is he... All the people... He had many emails from people who enjoyed the first one. And so mm-hmm. he went, wherever he went, he sent emails. He says, I'm coming to, mm-hmm. you know, you know, mm-hmm. Japan on December 3rd, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and if you want to dance with me, meet me at this place at 12 noon. And people showed up all over the world. <laughs> people showed up and uh, and danced with him. And then he came to me and he said, okay. But actually, as he was still videoing it, because mm-hmm. you know, we he was really happy with what I'd done on the other two songs uh, and wanted me to do the third one. He, he would send me videos, and, and and so I was actually writing the music, you know, fairly, you know, in, about in this middle when he was still into the process. I would, and and a couple, first couple of things I did, he, uh, he actually rejected. He didn't like. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the first thing I did, anyways, and then uh, and and you know something, he was right. Well, I guess definitely was right. Uh, and I, I went back to the drawing board, as they say, and I, I came up with the concept for what is now the music. Now, no lyrics, because I don't. I'm not. I'm a lyric. I'm not a lyricist, and mm-hmm. so, um, so that that's the that's the story. Um, Please tell us the story behind how the song Pran got selected. Here's here's the story behind mm-hmm. that. Uh, uh-huh. uh, originally. There was there was a pop singer who who has some fame and success actually who had contacted Matt and said she wanted to be involved um, mm-hmm. and she was going to write lyrics and sing on it and mm-hmm. when it came time for her to actually do to do that she she was unavailable she was too busy to do it so mm-hmm. now Matt and I had no our plan had gone awry and mm-hmm. we really had no lyrics and mm-hmm. uh, and so. He and I were talking about what we were going to do because we we both were very pleased with the music and the melody mm-hmm. that I'd written. Um, mm-hmm. was, what are we going to do for lyrics? And Matt said, you know, you know, English. What do we say in English? You know, it's really we don't want to be too explicit. We don't want to try to, you know, say something. Mm-hmm. We wanted to be subtle. And he says, what if we used non-English lyrics? And I said, I immediately said, you know, that sounds. That sounds right. We should definitely let's let's try to go with. We had we weren't saying using Bengla or any specific language. Mm -hmm. We did not have any specific language in mind. Just that it wasn't going to be in English. Mm -hmm. And so it said now. It said uh, so. Let's see if we can find some poet or some really interesting poetry that would be appropriate. You know. Mm -hmm. And so um, the first, oddly enough, the first person I thought.